So we're inside of Adobe Animate with the file that we're going to be using for um, learning how to practice panning techniques. And of course, the idea, the story with panning is you have what's called a POV or a point of view story, right? And the point of view is the individual who is sitting, um, in this case, it's going to be in a car or outside of the car, hovering near the car, watching the um, cityscape go by as they're driving. That's the five second story that we're going to create. In order to do that, when you create panning for um, an animation program, by and large, what you have to do is you have to create a set of assets that are larger than your stage. So you'll notice here on there are five layers in your timeline, instructions, car, roadway, background, and clouds. Each of the elements are on their own layers. And as you can see, the clouds extend beyond the stage edge. The city extends beyond the stage edge and the road extends beyond the stage edge. As a matter of fact, if you go command or control, depending upon what operating system you're on, and minus, you will see that your elements are bigger or are wider than your stage. So once again, we have to be clear, what's our objective? Our objective is to create a five second story where elements animate. Now in order for us to create a five second story, the first step in that process is we are going to add, not keyframes, but regular frames to our timeline. And there's a really easy way to do that. Look out at 5S, which is five seconds, and click and drag, not double click, but click and drag straight down on those five on, on frame 120, okay? So you're on frame 120, click and drag straight down on that frame, and all five layers are selected. Then, to add frames out to that spot, all you have to do is use the keyboard shortcut F5, not F6. F6 adds keyframes, F5 adds regular frames. So just hit the F5 key, and you'll see your timeline has been extended out to frame 120, which equals five seconds. Now, how can we tell <clears throat> that there's no animation occurring? Aside from looking at, aside from watching it. Okay, so as Moses said, we can tell because the, the timeline for each of those layers just is gray. And if we remember from what we were talking about earlier, what gray represents is simply a slice of time that repeats the content from the last keyframe. So here's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be thinking about basic panning technique theory. And basic panning technique theory is like this. The closer, if you're, if you're, um, if you're looking at a variety of um, elements that are, are going by you in the background, the closer the element to you, the faster it will appear to be going. So for example, if you're driving, and like when I was a little kid and you take some road trips and you, you could watch the road go by and I happen to come from a family that didn't have a lot of money. So we had a car that you could actually see through the floorboard, you could see the road underneath. And boy, that road was going by fast, you know? But then when I would look out to, to the field, I could see the field go by medium and the moon was way out there. It was going by really slow. Right? So the further an element is from you, the slower it's going to be moving. Okay? If you're looking at the, the white lines on the road as you're going by, those white lines are going by super fast. So basic panning technique is that the faster the element is panning, that means it's close to you. Okay? Since the clouds are pretty far away, we want the clouds to be panning at a fairly slow pace. But the difference between the clouds and the city, which are going to be two of our three panning elements, is that cities don't move by themselves, right? Clouds do. 
So while the clouds are further away, they have their own movement. Nevertheless, the main thing we want to do is we want to get our, we want to understand our story before we start animating it. And our story is this. Our driver is going to be on the car layer, and that driver is going to be on stage left. And the driver is going to be driving along from left to right. If the driver is driving along from left to right, which way are the clouds moving? Right to left. Right to left. So, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to right click on those clouds. They've already been turned into a symbol. So all we're doing is a bunch of motion tweens here. But we're going to right click on the clouds themselves. And we're going to choose create motion tween. And you'll see your cloud layer goes from gray to blue. Now, our playhead should be on our very last frame. That being the case, what we want to do is we want to get these clouds to move. And you could do it manually by using the mouse and dragging them, but you might shift it along the x-axis. And that would be a little weird if the clouds were like jumping up and down, you know, the bouncing clouds. So instead, we want to make sure that it retains its path along the x-axis. And the easiest way to do that, rather than dragging, is you could use the keyboard shortcut left arrow. One second, Gabe. Keyboard shortcut left arrow while holding the shift key. Because the shift key and left arrow together will move that element 10 pixels to the left every time you tap it. Yeah, Gabe, question. Oh, say that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The other option is you can hold the shift key down while you're dragging it and you're constraining the path to stay along that x-axis. But I like practicing just going shift, left arrow, and do it seven times. One, so make sure you got those clouds selected. Your play is on the very last frame and shift left arrow seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? And you'll see your animation is appearing right on the screen. We test this by going control enter or command return, same difference. We test, uh, yeah, we can test this and that's what we're doing. And you'll see that it actually creates. Um, an HTML page with a JavaScript file, so control test. And this is different than what we've been doing up until now because, and we'll talk about this later, but basically what we're doing here is rather than creating a Swift player, which creates this um, file that needs a Flash player to read it, this actually just plays inside of your browser window with the support. So essentially what it is, it's an HTML page, just a regular web page, and that HTML page is connecting to a JavaScript file, which has the programming that's making that happen. Okay, so we're seeing the clouds move. But we're gonna be driving by the city. The city's in the background. This is actually the FDR Highway, for anybody who's ever been to New York. That's the highway that's right along the East River. And we're driving along the East River, and we want to see the city going by. Actually, uh, from, from the location that we're at, it could be, you know, we're actually in New Jersey. I like you. We're in New Jersey, oh, oh. and we're seeing the, the city in the back. So, um, and believe me, nobody really wants to be in New Jersey. Okay, so now that's right that's that's the positive way to look at it chris we're trying to get out of new jersey into new york so we we go back to animate and we choose our timeline because notice what it does when we use this program to create this html um, page it keeps on making output window pop up and we just don't care about that right now so we go back to our timeline and this time, we're going to select our city. And then we're going to right click on our city. And we're going to, again, create a motion tween. 
and making sure that our playhead is on our last frame. This time we're gonna go shift left arrow three times. If you do more than three, then the city starts um, disappearing, right? So this is, this is a good example of why it's important to, when you create a scene, make sure all of your assets are larger than your screen, right? So we go shift left arrow, and you'll know, you know what's gonna happen when we do that. But now we're gonna do our last element, which is the roadway. And the roadway is the closest element to us. So we need to see that moving more. So let's select our roadway. Right click on your roadway. Don't double click and um, if you end up double clicking, then you end up being inside of that symbol. So Right click on your roadway. Just, I want you to look up here for a second. This can easily happen. Here's up my roadway. What happens if I double click? I'm inside of the roadway all of a sudden, yeah. right? So you gotta make sure you're in scene one. Right click on the roadway and choose create motion twin. And then shift left tap 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now, if you hit the return key just to watch inside of the um, animate program, you'll see there go the clouds, there goes the road, there goes the city. But we want to see what the user is going to see. Remember, the user is just going to see the stage. So we have to go control test movie. Yes. Now, tell me what's wrong with our road. Control test movie. What is wrong with our road? Yes, just test. Control, test, movie in browser. So what's wrong with our road? What do you think, uh, Justin? You can't tell that it's moving. Exactly. You can't tell that it's moving because the black looks the same and that white line looks the same. So what we have to do is we have to do a little edit. So here, let's go back to Adobe Animate. And inside of Adobe Animate, this time I do want you to double click on that road. So you're going to double click on the road and that's going to take us inside of the symbol known as MC Roadway. Okay, here's how I know I'm inside of that symbol, several ways. Number one, up in the top, it says MC Roadway. Number two, everything else is grayed out over here. And number three, my timeline all of a sudden is gone. Well, it's not gone. Remember, every symbol has its own timeline. So I'm inside of the timeline of MC Roadway. Well, here's where it gets cool. Take a look on our right side of our screen. Make sure you have the properties panel being displayed. With the properties panel being displayed, don't double click, just click on the white line on your road. And you'll see in the properties, we're looking at a shape, which is a line. But you'll notice that there is a fill and there's a stroke. Well, the fill is empty, which is a good thing for a line, and the stroke is filled. But notice, underneath where it says stroke one, it says style, right there. Click on the drop down where it says style, and rather than having a solid line, let's pick the third one down, which is a dashed line. Okay, now, when we use this dashed line, we could also modify that dashed line. So right next to the word style, and it shows you the dashed line now, you'll see a pencil. Click on that pencil. And rather than having the spacing of the dash occur every six points, let's change it to every 18 points. So again, what I did was I chose my style. I changed from a solid line to a dashed line. I then clicked on my pencil to edit 
that strokes style. And then where it says spacing six points, I make it spacing 18 points. And then when I return, I see that line is now broken up. So now the last thing we do in order to check how this looks is we have to get out of the symbol back to the scene, right? So we go back to the top left-hand corner where it says scene one. And then you can test your scene, control enter or command return. Either one will also work. And now when you see it, you can see the road moving. Right? So we've got the basic building blocks of our pan. And here's what's important about this pan. Our window is set up to be a specific size. Our elements are bigger than what we can see, right? So that's why it gives us the, the illusion of that scene is going by as we're watching. Yes? Is the picture actually bigger than what it shows? Yes. And is it hidden from yes. us too? It's hidden from us because our stage ends here. So yes. Our image content is, is way oh, out here. That's, thank yes. you, thank okay. you. You're welcome. So let's go back and let's get this to be a little bit more interesting. So back to our timeline. Oh, okay. And I want you to go to frame one and select frame, select the blank keyframe in this production. So one of the things that sometimes throws me for a loop is down at the bottom in my timeline, I have a, a, a scroll bar. Sometimes if you can't see your first frame, you have to use that scroll bar to get back to frame one. But in this case, what we want to do is we want to select frame one of the car layer. And in your library, you'll see there's already an element called MC car, meaning movie clip car. What I want you to do is with frame one of the car layer selected, and you must make sure it's frame one of the car layer, take your MC car and place it off to the left of your road like this. So now the car, now the car, MC car, is on frame one of the car layer. Is the car layer animated? No. Okay, so let's right click on the car and say create motion twin. Now drag your playhead to frame 120 and drag the car off stage to the right. So now the car will be going from left to right, but when we test the scene, there's a problem. There's a problem, Houston. So let's check our scene. Test your scene. And what's the problem here? We've got our road fixed, and we have the perspective of watching the car drive. But what's wrong with that car? It's too long. The road's uh, too no. long, and it has to start all over. Please. Well, no, it's not about the starting all over part. Oh, no? Um, Ryan. The wheels aren't turning. Yeah, it's like it's a car that seems to be just levitating oh, along. Yeah. Right? So we need some wheels. And let's go back to animate. And this is just kind of we, um, uh, um, what am is I this, looking for? Is uh, this what we did with the pickle, but now we're doing it to the car? Similar. Let's go back to animate. Okay. And this is just a, a revisiting of a very important concept when it comes to creating animation. You can put symbols inside of other symbols. You can have movie clips that have independent timelines. Based on those two concepts, we should be able to create wheels that rotate. Okay, here's how we're gonna do it. We're going to 
do an edit of a symbol directly from the library. So here, before you created a button, before break, we created a button and we edited it on the stage by going edit in place. Another way to edit a symbol is by editing directly in the library. So what you're gonna do is you're going to double click on this object here, MC wheel. Not MC wheel nested, but MC wheel. When you double click on MC wheel, not on the word, but on the icon, then you see just this wheel, okay? We want to create a rotation for that wheel. So we have to go to the timeline. We need two of them because- No, we don't. And I'll tell you why. That's a good, that's a good observation because cars at least have two wheels when you're looking from the side. But we'll see because of the fact that it's a symbol, we can do this to a single symbol and utilize that symbol multiple times. Oh, okay. So here we are. We're inside of MC wheel. We're going to right click on frame one and we're going to say create motion tween. And then in our properties panel, we're not going to move the wheel at all. But in our properties panel, we should see it says properties motion tween. If you don't see that, then make sure you have the last frame of your timeline selected. So I have my last frame of my timeline selected. I have my properties panel open. So you have to make sure you're not in your library anymore. You're in your properties panel. And then here where it says rotate, let's say rotate two times. Type in a two and hit the enter or return key. So now if you watch this little animation, there's the wheel rotating. I have it. Yeah, you have a problem there. Stop for a second, please. All right. Okay. So. Oh, okay. So now we've got a wheel that rotates. This is a symbol. As I said earlier, symbols are master copies that you can use over and over and over again. Once we created this wheel with a rotation, we could have 30 wheels on that car if we wanted to. So we can have a big rig. But in this case, we just have a Volkswagen. So here's what we do. We go back to our library, and this time we double click on MC car. Again, we're going to edit, but this time we're editing the car. So I go back to my library. I see MC car and I double click on the icon MC car. And you'll notice that this symbol MC car already has two layers. It has a car layer that's locked and it has an MC wheels layer. Now, all you have to do is go to your library and drag two copies of MC wheel onto the wheels layer and line them up on top of those wheels like this. So watch here. Here's MC wheel. I have frame one of the wheels layer selected. I drag MC wheel here and I can use the arrow keys to adjust it. And I can drag another copy of that same symbol here. Because of the fact that these are symbols, they already have an animation built inside of them. They're both going to be turning. But here's the other interesting thing, and this goes back to what I talked about at break time or before break time when we created that pre-built bouncing ball. I talked about the fact that movie clips have independent timelines. This symbol, this car, only has one frame. But the animation of the wheel takes 24 frames. But it doesn't care. Because it's a movie clip, it'll just keep on spinning. So our last thing to do, make sure you get your wheels. So you, get, you should have two wheels, both of them on the wheels layer of the MC car symbol. 
So this is really reinforcing the idea that symbols that have their own animation inside of other symbols are what makes animations work. Okay, so here's where we stand. I've got MC wheel. I took two of them. I put them on the wheels layer of the MC car. My last thing to do is go to scene one. And it's, I already put it there. So let's see if it works. Control test or just command, command return or control enter. And there it goes. So you have to go back to your scene though before you can, can control enter. Yeah. And test your scene. And there go my wheels. The wheels on the Volkswagen go round and round. 